the community is broke because we fed them all weekend. <laughs> <laughs> but he's here to feed us today, all right? Amen. Amen. All right. Hey, let's open with a little bit of uh, excitement here.
Yeah, it is. Yeah. Oops. <laughs> Doug and Alice aren't here today. Um, Newt Wright, you guys know Newt. He seems to think that he can steal our assistant pastor away anytime he wants. <laughs> Working. What's that? It's working. Yeah, it is. Yeah. <laughs> Which leaves me having to do his job. Jim's not here. He seems to think he can go to Oregon anytime he wants. Which leaves me again having to do his job. <laughs> Who else isn't here? Alice isn't here. It leaves you having to do Alice's job. That's right. Yeah. My sister isn't here. Neither one of them. <laughs> yeah. Well. Uh -oh. oh, I can tell stories now. <laughs> Don't have any family members, correct? Yeah. We do have our good friend uh, Tino and family. I'm going to see if I can get this straight. Let's go. This is Tino over here on this end. The other big man is Santana. We have Casey, Jordan, and not Dallas, Austin. All right. <laughs> I get my. Austin, and of course his lovable wife, Louise. You guys go on the internet and you get lovable Louise. So that's our guest for today. But Ma, very, very exciting. We have a lady back here. Some of you may recognize her. Uh, yeah. Susie, what's your name? <laughs> <laughs> it's so good to see Susie and Bridie back with us this morning. All oh, right, here comes a whole nother slew of people. See, they're on our side. Oh, they're on your side. We're just wondering what happened to all the people on that side. <laughs> yeah, they're on our side. See, they, they directly... Okay. I never like to point out when people are late, but here come the boxes. Uh, <laughs> uh, you sure cured the cold. <laughs> anyway, uh, Tino, we're getting into a little bit well, later, but Tino was in the same prison that Doug was in when they had the misfortune of having me as their chaplain. And, uh, 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 hey, there's a whole bunch of people down there, Phoenix and, and the area that uh, were in the same time that you guys were in. Uh, God was doing a work out there at that point in time. He's got a ton of work in this man's life. I'm going to let him tell you all about it. But, uh, today we're talking about testimony. Power of testimony, because that's what people <coughs> come here and talk to us about. As soon as I stop screeching here. Okay. Anyway, things coming up here. This is Jim's job. Got the uh, the Bible study. We started the the Bible of uh, the uh, book of Malachi on Wednesday night. Uh, we haven't really started. <coughs> with any verses, so come on out just the history of Malachi, the time and frame in which he prophesied. So it actually starts up on this Wednesday. The adult Bible study uh, with Don, I guess that's still going. I saw you guys all come in here. Uh, you, you passed Romans 1 yet? Oh, yeah. Uh, you're up, what are you on now? We should not today. <laughs> what did you say, what? In the middle of nine. Really? Wow. That, Moving very long. Yeah. That since what? I don't know. <laughs> but it's yeah. really good. I mean, people come in here, they really get, they really like that Bible study. It's a little different than the way I do mine, uh, where I make everybody shut up. Uh, <laughs> he actually lets people talk and, and explain what the scriptures mean to him or to themselves. So it's really kind of good. Uh, we got a board of directors meeting coming up here on the second Wednesday. That's still in the future. Men's fellowship second Saturday, still in the future. Uh, women's fellowship follows that, and uh, we got a women's Bible study. What's the status of that this week? Thursday, two o'clock. It's going to be Thursday, two o'clock at your house, right? Refreshments and not school temperatures. Yeah, cool, cool house. Uh, I go for the food sometimes. Yeah. <laughs> Let's see what else we got. Well, that's okay. Jim, go sit down. Here comes Doug. Okay, well, we've got some praise reports. Uh, where is Nancy? 
Oh, she's so, quarantined. That's right. You told me that. Quarantine. Yeah. So, but so just because she might know somebody that's not with somebody else. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, that's good. I, I prefer caution. I prefer caution. Over. Okay. Let me restate that, that rule I have. If you're sick, stay at home. She's not sick, I know, but she might have known somebody that's sick, so she's being precautious. So if you're if you have that situation, stay at home. Okay? Same, same thing. Uh, and, of course, no one thinks that uh, she has anything. By the way, this most for the most part, this church has natural immunities. I, I fully believe that. Amen. Um, oh, yeah. And, After we got hit hard. <laughs> and I I firmly believe that that's never good as potent as if you get the vaccine. Uh, but get the vaccine. If you want to get the vaccine, that's your choice. I'm not up here to say one way or another on that. But I also believe that natural immunity does a lot. So that's just my own personal belief. Other than that, I'm a pastor, not a uh, politician or a doctor. Let's see. Let's move on to... You had a couple of horrible days, and so did Nancy. That's what I was thinking about with Nancy. Uh, she had her uh, nuclear, test. nuclear test because her legs wouldn't work to get that thing going. So they give her all this stuff in her body. You had two miserable days, didn't you? Yes. Yeah. So, but you're well now. I'm better. Yeah, okay. Grouchy. My well. knee. Grouchy, huh? <laughs> and how's your guy's house coming? It's Slowly. coming. It's Slowly. Slower than you like, huh? No. They want to get out of mom's house. <laughs> the grouch. Get out of the grouch as hell. Okay. Uh, Wayne, some yeah. of you sent me a text. Please add Pastor Ralph Hood to your prayers. He is 85 and has a serious diagnosis center. Ralph? Ralph, Pastor Ralph Hood. Pastor. Please put Kathy Jenkins on. Kathy, yeah, let's do that. Um, we're going to try and get through some of this stuff quickly today because. Uh, Pastor, I, I had a friend, her name is Joni. She lost her husband yesterday. Who? Sue, a friend of mine, Joni. She lost Joan. her husband yesterday. He took the dog out for Heart a walk, failure. sent the dog home. Oh, boy. <coughs> Well, we've got uh, praise reports. Just looking through here, I see Jeffrey Hunter. We we helped him to go to uh, Phoenix or to uh, uh, where we have Prescott. That's right. And he had his. Oh, there you are! Hi, Jeff. We're back again. There are praise reports. We got Carol Ross back there. Amen. Uh, and that's a praise report. We're back. Uh, uh, Daniel Blair, nobody knows us. Jackie Blair, we send out every week, we send out uh, uh, letters to people. Actually, it's just the bulletins right here. And Jackie Blair is one of these ladies that wants, she lives back in Maine somewhere. And she likes to get our bulletins. <coughs> so, uh, and then she calls this church for prayer from Maine. So praise God. Praise God, yeah. Um, oh, wife again? Okay. Praise report, she won. Okay, I have, I have a complaint report. <laughs> since, since Linda Corbell passed, I was in the room when Linda Corbell said, give everything to Cookie. And it sounds simple to me, so I said to Linda, I said, she was on hospice. I said, well, maybe you should put that in writing. She said, okay. <coughs> so Linda Corbell told me to drop a will. Sandy drew up the will, and of course, Linda passed. We had Linda's memorial right here, remember that? Mm -hmm. But she left everything to Cookie, which is that little house on the corner there. Uh, anyway, don't hire me to do your legal work, okay? <laughs> Because as it turned out, I should have had 
another person sign off on that besides just the notary because it went to the judge, the judge said, well, wait a minute, there might be people out there. Uh, so it became what they call a holographic will. I'm trying to get this long. It was last October that happened, and just Thursday after going through a lot of stuff. And she had a really bad lawyer in the deal, but we still won. And oh, she now right. so, And very soon we'll be getting a, a work party from the man. We're gonna go over there and do some work on that little trailer to get all ready for Cookie. Uh, yeah, congratulations, Cookie. And next right. time, next time, hire Don. <laughs> uh, oh, <laughs> you hired Sandy. Uh, yeah, that was, it's been a busy week. Uh, neither doctor nor a lawyer. Neither doctor, lawyer, no. Yeah, I'm barely a pastor. I've got to somebody take my place today for being a pastor. So. Uh, Gary and Jerry are situated in the White House, and they're also going yes. back and forth. Uh, appreciate all the help. Caleb put together a thing for them for, uh, on the computer for a GoFundMe. And, uh, if they don't see it on Facebook, oh, if you don't see it on Facebook, Sandy. On here you can pull some strips off. Uh, you know, we raised some money last time. You guys, thank you. We raised over $1,000 just in donations. That helped them out. But remember, they still have a whole house and a whole life to put back together. And they're getting immense help from the community. It, it makes me want to cry when I think about it. But we did have a problem in that we had promised the house to the Gonzalez family. And uh, so Nita called up and gave her her house. We got this whole family was in Nita's little house. And, and, and the Parson, Parsons have the big house. So, so we have like 11, 12 people living over there. <laughs> yeah. Hey, everybody's chipped in. You know, those pillowcases and pillows work out great. A lot of people get, and they, in fact, they have so much stuff over there now in my White House. We're going to have to get a moving van to get them out. <laughs> you know, I keep, keep it up and keep waiting it. for them to come home. Oh, jeez. <laughs> so they've been blessed. Are you guys. And I told Jerry this, that uh, you know, she's lost a lot, the family's, the, the uh, young girl, uh, Destiny, has lost a lot, and uh, she was crying, but I, I just had to point out, do you realize what an opportunity this gave the community to come together yes. and, and bless them? Uh, and uh, so, yeah. we have some new members who've joined today. We have Jerry. And Shelly. Yeah. They, they've been coming, but so far they haven't decided to stay away. Uh, <laughs> then it got pointed out to me that we have a board member who has never joined. You! Better off the paper. There's only two requirements to, fill, to be in a member at this church. Number one, you have to love Jesus, and the second one, you have to put up with me. So, I do. We've been doing both for a year. We have to sign on the dotted line. <laughs> <laughs> what? You asked for them and Barbara has them. Oh, okay. They're, they're on my seat. I'm, I'm even the production guy. Come on. I know. Yeah, you're even the production guy. <laughs> okay, what about Steve and Diane? Anyway, <laughs> Steve and Diane filled out there. They're good people. <laughs> oh, I didn't want to go there. But I had such a blessing this week from Steve and Diane. Uh, Okay, I'm gonna tell you. That's nice. Yeah, she, she blessed me with her little car. It's a little thing, you can't put two people in it, which is good, and Sandy's got too bad of a neck, but I'm not, she, don't say that. I'm not. she actually caused me, this angered me, because my, my shop has been filthy since I built it. But now that I had to put that nice little car in there, I had to clean my whole shop. <laughs> Took a whole day, Diane. I hope you're happy. <laughs> no good deed left. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, it's just been a good week. Been a good week. We got to spend a couple days over at Doug and Alice's with, with uh, the Gonzalez family. You know, the Doug and, and uh, Tina were in together at the same time. So talk a lot about a lot of old stuff. Anyway, where was I? Okay, let's let's pray. Cause we got we got to get on with this. Oh, yeah, Carol. Now my daughter Phyllis has a friend, Jessica, that's in a coma with the COVID. 
Oh boy. <coughs> yeah, that came through our, what was the name again? Jessica. Jessica. Well, let's just start right there. Heavenly Father, Lord Jesus, as we come into your presence this morning, Lord, I want to thank you for all the praises that went forth. And I want to thank you, Lord, just for your spirit being here, how we can laugh, mostly at me, Lord, but how we can just laugh and enjoy one another's company, Lord. What a wonderful thing it is to be part of the body of Christ. Yes. And then, Lord, I just, uh, as we come before you, and just remember who you are, that you are the God of all creation. We, we come, Lord, uh, with our hearts bowed to you, but with our hearts full of thanks, and that we can come up to you and go, Daddy, Abba, Father, Lord, because you said that uh, that's how you want our relationship. And Father, that's what we desire each and every day. We're not here for religion, Lord. We're here for a relationship with our Creator. And we just thank you, Lord, for, for being that Creator and loving us. But Lord, you also say in your word that we have not because we ask not. And so, Lord, uh, we don't want to just start coming right off with all the things that we are going to ask you. But Lord, we do have things we want to ask you. And Lord, you say to cast all of these cares upon you, Lord. So, uh, Lord, we're, we're aware that... Uh, Jessica is in a coma. We don't know Jessica. Uh, most people in here don't know. We know of her. But Lord, you know exactly who we're talking about. Yes. And we're lifting her up before your throne and asking for that intervention, Lord. Uh, we have a good friend who used to be our fire chief here, Lord, uh, Kathy. And she also is struggling in the hospital right now, Lord. We don't know all the situation. But Lord, uh, we lift her up before your throne. And Lord, we're just asking in the name of your son, Jesus, that, that you would uh, come alongside of her. Mm -hmm. uh, Lord, and Ralph, Lord, Ralph Hood, mm -hmm. we lift him up, Lord. And, and the, the things that are happening in his life is uh, because, Lord, you've asked us to ask you, and we're asking. And Lord, we pray for the lady named Joni, but we don't know her. We know people who do know her, and she's lost her husband, Lord. So, Lord, I ask for that peace and comfort that only you can give for her, Lord. Lord, I have a special prayer for the, the family, Lord, that, that lost everything, but I know that you've heard all of our prayers. I just want to reiterate it with the entire congregation that you continue to bless the Farson family, Lord. Let them see the good in this thing that we call a tragedy, and they're... If, if our eyes are stayed on you, that's all we can see, Lord, is good. As long as our eyes stay on you and not on the tragedy. So, Father, we lift them up before your throne. Lord, we all have a good friend by the name of Billy, Lord. So he is, and Lord, he's not doing well. Lord, we don't know what your plan is for Billy, and we're not going to thwart your plan. But our desire is always for a restoration and life good life on this side of eternity, Lord. So, Lord, we know he's in bad shape, but we also know a, a, a God that can bring him right to back, Lord. And we're praying for Julia when she's going through all this stuff, Lord. She's a basket case, Lord, and give her that peace that passes all understanding as well, Lord. Oh, Lord. Thank you for bringing our Barbara back through that horrible test that she had to have. Lord, we know that she's got a good heart. We just need to prove it to these doctors so she can get that other <laughs> surgery, Lord. Anyway, Lord, we just want to thank you this morning for so much <coughs> as we come before you. In the name of Jesus. Amen. 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 Out. That's right. how you do it. <laughs> the money will fall out if I do it. Oh, okay. <laughs> so I preloaded it. Hey, I didn't preload it because we needed any money, okay? We don't need money, we need hearts. And Lord, I just thank you, Lord, for all the hearts that are here. Okay, you guys, you're our guests. 
Unless you're teaching your kids something here. Okay? He taught us. Oh, he taught me. <laughs> Heavenly Father, Lord Jesus, we want to thank you, Lord, that we don't need money. But, Lord, we need the hearts. So, Father, whatever you put in there, we know it comes from a cheerful giver. Lord, that that money can be blessed to, to do the work that needs to be done in this community, in this town, wherever it needs to go, Lord. It, it's your money, not our money. And we just thank you, Lord, for the hearts that put it in there right now. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Maestro. <laughs>
take of it, it's, it's very important. I know we've had many lessons on it and whatnot. I just want to remind people that what we're doing here is we're partaking of the body and the blood of Christ. The Bible is very careful to teach us that we shouldn't do this in a haphazard manner. Uh, because if we do, we could actually be calling judgment down on ourselves. Uh, if you're here today and you believe in Jesus Christ, He is your Lord and Savior, uh, I encourage you to take communion. But when you take communion, as we take it, please wait and we'll take it all together, as the Bible uh, explains that we should. And, and also, before we take it, take a moment just to reflect on all the things that Jesus has done for you. When I was the chaplain in the prison, we used to have a thing called popcorn testimonies, where before we did communion, people would just pop up. They had 15 seconds to say, what has Jesus done for us today? I mean, the shortest 
he woke me up. He, he returned my wife to me. He did this or he did that. So many little one-liner statements that just remember the things that Jesus has done for you. Then you're in the spirit of communion. Otherwise, it's, it's a wafer and a drink. It's not a wafer and a drink to us. It's the blood and it's the body of Jesus Christ. Amen. So Lord, as we pass out the elements, Lord, uh, help us, Lord, right now as we come to your table to wash our hands. Yes. In Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Why it is snow? Why it is snow? Though my sins for a start. Lord, I know, Lord, I know that I'm clean and I'm forgiven to the power of the blood, to the wonder of your love. Through faith in you, I know that I can be. Why has no White as snow, though my sin will be scarlet. Lord, I know, Lord, I know that I'm clean and I'm forgiven through the power of your God, through the wonder of your God, through faith in you. I know that I can be now, white as snow, white as snow, though my sin were as scarlet, Lord, I know, yes, I know that I'm clean and I'm forgiven through the power of your blood, through the wonder of your love. It had been taken away from the table, hidden and wrapped in white linen, is a picture of the body of Christ. As he picked up the offie Coleman, the bread, he said to everybody, This is my body, which is for you. And as often as you do this, as often as we come together and do this, we remember Jesus. So just take a moment and remember what Jesus has done for you as we partake. Thank you, Lord. Lord, we could probably sit here and do this all day, thinking of all the things that you've done in our life. This is our testimony day. Lord, 
started it, it can just go on. He's done so much. But thank you, Lord, for your body. Similarly, after, after supper, again, Jesus reached over and he picked up the cup. No ordinary cup. This was called the Elijah cup. Elijah was to come, you see. This also had a, another name for the cup. It's called the cup of redemption. And Jesus was to partake of that cup that very night. So Jesus himself didn't drink of this cup. He said he would drink of it later. But he would go out into the garden later that evening praying, Lord, if there be any other way, let this cup pass from me. But the communication between the Father and the Son was so mighty as Jesus looked to his Father and said, not my will, but let yours be done. And Jesus partook of that cup of redemption for each and every one of us in this room. Yes. Let us remember Jesus. On a hill, far away, there stood an old rugged cross, the emblem of suffering and change. I love that old cross, where the hear it. And best for a world of lost was made. So I'll cherish the old run cross till my trophies at last I lay down. I will cling to the old. And it changes something for the round. For the old rugged cross, so despised by the world, as a wondrous attraction for me. For the dear land of God. Left his glory above to bear it at dark Calvary. So I'll cherish the old rugged cross till my trophies at last I lay down. I will cling to the old rugged cross. To the old rugged cross, I will never be true. It's shame and repose, gladly bear. Then you'll call me someday to my home far away, where his glory forever I'll forget. And I'll cherish the old rugged cross till my glory at last I lay down. I will cling to the old rugged cross and exchange it someday for crown. I will cling. To the old rugged cross. <clears throat> and I'll exchange it someday for a crown. Thank you. Thank you for your body and for your blood. <laughs> Thank you.
Okay. As a lot of you guys know, uh, when Sandy and I first moved out here, I was, I took a, what moved us out to the area was that uh, I accepted a job as the state chaplain at Arizona State Prison. And that's the job that I use that word loosely, retired from. Uh, but it was about a three and a half year span that I was out there. And it was a time such as I've never seen before. So much salvation. We'd have services sometimes of 100, 200 men in a state prison. We had pod pastors like that would go down into the dorms, inmates, that would go down into the dorms, hold services and prayer vigils down inside the, the dorms of where the inmates lived. At one point in time, on a day called the National Day of Prayer, uh, it got canceled, but we had a big thing set up for this day at the prison. We invited a, a singing group to come into the chapel, and we had a thing set up where everybody was going to come out onto the yard and pray. But a man by the name of uh, Bin Laden, no, uh, Obama, <laughs> Obama, <laughs> canceled the National Day of Prayer. Yeah. Therefore, we were a state entity. We had to cancel this National Day of Prayer. So I was told, Chaplain, you cannot have that event where you want all the men, different faith groups, different faith groups, all the different faith groups to come out onto the yard and pray because it's been canceled. Well, a couple people came to me, like this man here. He says, you know what, Chaplain, you maybe, you maybe can't go out on that yard, but when they open those doors, we're coming out. We're coming out. Amen. When the time came that they opened the yard for the inmates to come out, the band was in there. We opened the door to the chapel and we started playing some praise music. And one by one, all the men came out onto the yard, three different yards. They had to hold hands between the fences. Made 1,400 men made a fence all the way around that prison yard. Amen. My warden came up to me and he said, Chaplain Basie, I've seen cell extractions. I've seen men's heads cracked in open with weights. I've seen, had to pull men out of here who are screaming and hollering. He said, I've seen just about everything you can think of seeing in a prison. I have never seen that. Amen. And it was men like the man I'm about to introduce to you that was a big part of this ministry, along with Pastor Doug, uh, and of course, Paul Vessio, you know, remember Paul Vessio? Uh, uh, this, this church itself has ordained four of these people already. All right. And today we are blessed with, with another man. Uh, we've been wanting to get him up here for years. <laughs> and he brought his wife, Louise, with You can find him on the internet. It's my man, Tina. Oh, I got Sandy. Just stand up and tell you, tell everybody what Tino meant to you. Just real quick, shout it. Are you yeah. Because yeah. <laughs> you guys know how I just leave Sandy standing and I take care of all other stuff. Tino well, was the most humble, helpful, awesome inmate of any of them and all the thousands I ever dealt with. Uh, he always stayed close to keep me safe. He always set up everything, never bragged about it, never said anything. He was a wonderful, and out of thousands and thousands of inmates, he's my very favorite. <laughs> <laughs> I was mostly going to tell him about, because I leave Sandy a lot, as you know, you guys are pretty harmless, but. In a, in a prison, in a prison, you know, it's not nice to leave your wife over there standing, you know. Tino never took her eye, took his eyes off her. So she never got scammed. She never got used or abused or anything. Tina was, she, she'd come home, she'd say, yeah, Tino watched me all the time. So for that, I, I thank you, Tino. Yeah. Come on up. My friend, Tino. Hi. Hi. 
Okay. He's got it. Testing. Perry's. Perry's mic. It's on. Perry's. Do you hear me? No. No. Oh, no. Let me see. No, that's not going to work. You no place to put this. This shirt. Test. Come on, Tino. <laughs> Praise God. Praise God. How many of you love Jesus? How many of you love Jesus? Amen. Praise the Lord. Um, yeah, that what the pastor said is true. It's very true. We've a lot of murderers, killers in there. And we minister to a lot of people. But, you know, by the grace of God, you know, it happened. It had to happen. Why? Because the Bible says that God's word is going to go out and not going to come back until it accomplishes what its purpose was and is today. Amen? Amen. 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 Uh, my name is Tino, Brother Tino, as you guys heard. Uh, my beautiful wife, Louise. I'm going to let her share a little bit of her testimony. Uh, my son, Santana, and all my kids, our children. Santana, he just barely turned 18. And Casey's our granddaughter, our first granddaughter. Austin and Jordan. We have custody of them for like two years already. They call us mom and dad already. So Pima, Apache, um, Hopi, and uh, Yaki. Okay. Very good. So there's many cultures in this world, but one Lord. Yes. 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 One Lord. Amen. One Lord. Um, by the grace of God, we made it here. You know, everything is about the Lord. Yeah. So, uh, wow. Where's all the youngsters at? Look here. That's the Everybody's future of the church. Everybody's supposed to raise their hand. Future of the church. We're all supposed to raise their hand right here because that's who we are, right? Uh, yeah. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Um, uh, yeah, we had a good time since we've been here. You know, we came Friday, we got on the road Friday, and uh, it, was a, it was a long way, but, you know, God's purpose is for us to come and share testimony here. Yeah. You know, and the other night we shared about, we shared about, uh, by the blood of the Lamb, amen? Amen. amen. First, first, first of all, it says that we are overcomers. Who's an overcomer here? Amen. How many of you shared your testimony? Oh, testimony. Yeah. It's very important, like Pastor said, to share your testimony. When you share your testimony, you overcome a lot of things personally in your life. Okay? It says that we are all overcomers. We're overcomers by the blood of the Lamb and by the word of our yeah. testimony. You see that? You see how it blends together? Yeah. We're overcomers. We all are. Amen? Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. Praise God. So I'm very glad I'm here. Man, it's been a long time waiting, man. I mean, before the pandemic started, we wanted to come. But, you know, we got kind of blocked off. I lost my job. And a lot of people got scared living in fear. You know what I mean? The Psalm yes. 91 was coming into effect and everybody and this and that and this and that, which is, there's nothing wrong with it. There's nothing wrong with it. And, but the Lord, he always told me, the Lord always tells me through his word, where's your faith? Where's your faith? Where's your faith? You know, we live by faith, not by sight. You know, we hear the word of God. Not the voice of the world. You know what I mean? You know, and there's a lot of truth I'm going to tell you about my life and how God had his hand in everything. Yeah. And he let me see it when I got home. Because when I got home, six years later, I sat there in my living room. Sat in my, in my kitchen, right? In my kitchen. <laughs> Every morning with a cup of coffee with my Bible open doing my study, this is something that I've never thought in my whole entire life I will be doing. Is standing up here and sharing the word of God. Yeah. 
But when I got home, it was funny. It was funny because I had a window and I had the curtain open looking outside and I see a cop roll by and I'm still like, you know what I mean? <laughs> and I laugh from I said, what are you doing, man? What are you doing? <laughs> you know, it's, it was funny. It was funny like that. But then I share with my wife and I'm, I'm like, man, why do I do that still? You know, it's just something that I had to get out. You know what I mean? And now I, and now I want to share a little bit about growing up um, with the Pascoyaki tribe. I was Catholic and did all my religious ceremonies according to you know my Catholic religion. The Pascoyaki tribe. We had our own Catholic religion. We did it the Native American way. You know the Pascoyaki way. You know, we did our own thing. You know what I mean? I, I danced, I, you know, I did everything, with, you know, according to their, you know, and I believe that God showed me a better way. God showed me a better way because I believe that us as Native Americans, Native Americans, me as a Native American, we attain a lot of pride. And what does the Bible say about pride? That it's a pathway to destruction. You know, me, I was the type of person they want to let nobody tell me what to do. <laughs> Never yeah. wanted to let anybody tell me what to do. It's too good, you know, too good. Too good for anybody else. But praise the Lord, I pray for my people, you know, <coughs> that they come to the Lord, yeah. you know, because the devil is running rapid. He's doing everything he can because his days are going to end. Amen. Amen. You know, but God is good. God is good. And I want to share a, a scripture with you guys about change. About change. You know, today's uh, scripture was uh, when I was talking to Sister Sandy, Mama Sandy up there. I call it Mom. That's uh, 2 Corinthians 5.17. And it's so important that we understand it. So important. Because that's what my life was based on. It was totally based on that. You know, for those who are in Christ Jesus, we are a new creation. A new creation. It doesn't say anything else after that. It just says the old is gone. Gone. Amen? The old is gone. But the new has come. The new has come. And you know, we gotta put that, we gotta, we gotta write that on our, the, the tablet of our heart. Because as Christians, that's how we gotta be, in the way it says it. Amen? Amen? We are a new creation. The old is gone. You know, that's what helped me when I got out. But before I went to prison, I took one scripture with me also. Growing up in the gangs and the, you know, the violent life by the age of 13, I was stabbed through gang violence nine times. Okay, nine times. I had a death experience, lifted up in the air with the Lord, showing me my life. Looking down at the ambulances, to, he, he, I could hear his voice saying, look at these people, don't even know you're trying to revive you. Look at your mom holding your dead body. <laughs> You know what I mean? My sister's all the way around like this. It was like the tunnel vision. How many of you have seen the Passion of the Christ? Amen? You know the last part when he gave his life, he gave his spirit up to the Lord and then the raindrop came? That's what it looked like. But I tell you what, there is life after death. There's life after death. And you gotta, you gotta be really you gotta, you gotta really know this. You gotta really know that. I experienced this just like talking to you like I am right now. You know what I mean? You read the book of the, the, the rich man and the beggar. One went to heaven, one went to hell. There's no in between, right? Yes. There's no in between. Don't ever think like that because that's what the Bible says, that there's no in between, okay? For today is a day of salvation, okay? There's a point for man to die one, and then the judgment. Alrighty? So, 
Um, that's what it looked like. That's what it looked like. So I had that experience. And I used it as pride to get strikes from the homeboys. You know what I mean? Man, you did that, do, 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 this and that, this and that. You know, I didn't know what I was doing. But anyway, I went, my life got shot three times throughout these gang violence things going on and before I met my wife. And, but not here to glorify the devil, but when I went to, when I met my wife, we met in Dallas, Texas. We met in Dallas, Texas, <laughs> and we were sitting at their Hard Rock Cafe, still living in the world, you know, trying to have a piece of steak, but she didn't let me have it. <laughs> you know what I mean? She was part of the Policy Council, and it was a national uh, parent-teacher conference. So that's how we met. And then when we came back, we got together, and uh, uh, we've been together ever since, off and on. But in the worldly, in the worldly sense, you know, we did drugs, we did partying. Actually, I corrupted my wife into doing drugs. I corrupted her. That was my my thing to do. Was corrupt, go house to house, getting high with everybody. Here, you want to try it? Try it. That's the way I live my life. You know, the, the heart of man is wicked. Jeremiah seventeen. Yeah. 17.9 says it. It says it. I'm like, man, the heart of man is wicked. There's no cure for it. But Jesus is our cure. Amen? Yeah. You know what I mean? I went to, up to uh, the Navajo Nation. I preached on that. And, you know, that's, that's how our sinful ways are. That's how it is. So, uh, so after that, you know, I ended up almost taking three lives. Shot three people point blank. And they wanted to give me, you know, 15 to 25 for each account. Could have been doing life. You know what I mean? But God, God had his hand in everything and he didn't let me realize it after I got out. I was like, wow. Wow, but you know what? I don't regret anything I've done in my past. I don't because I wouldn't be here today. I wouldn't be alive today because of what God has done through it all. You know what I mean? Uh, you know, I can sit here and tell you all the wonderful things God has done for me. I cry. I was sitting there crying when the <laughs> pastor was singing the song about, uh, what is the second song you sang? What was it? Yeah. I remember he used to sing that in, in the prison. And I'm like, man, I like that emoji guy. Like, <laughs> <clears throat> thinking, what if he wouldn't have did that for me? You know, that's what wonderful thing that God does is give you a personal relationship with him. Yes. God's desire was to have a relationship with man. A relationship. You know, religion is not. It's no bueno. No bueno. Right. You know, I speak Spanish too, so by the way. But anyway, you know, uh, all through that, I give God glory. I give God glory. And when we're in the prison, man, there's so many things we can, I can tell you. You know, I, I didn't really talk a lot, but I was always present. I was always present. And um, there was a lot of things that we did. A lot of things, people that I met. People that have been in prison themselves who have changed their lives. Pastor Basie, his life was changed. You know, they wanted to give him life just for what? Just I took four hostages. Yeah, four hostages. They wanted to give him life up in California. I was like, man, that's rough up there. You know, the system is rough. And me, I almost took three lives and they wanted to give me life. You know what I mean? But. He took hostage. Yeah, I didn't want to kill him, but I, I almost did these three these people. So yeah. you know, it's kind of it's different. You know, it's just the same way as everybody here is different. There's nobody like you. Not even the twin that that person has as a twin is not the same. You know, they're different. They look the same on the outside, but they're not. But they're different. See, you know, different. tell them the story about. When that man came against you for the hit. Oh yeah. 
That's a good story. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I was almost hit. I, I got hit up. I got hit up in the church in the chapel uh, by another native brother that was um, on our yard. He came. He told me what he had to do in order to go back to the yard. But the thing was, he didn't want to. I seen it and he didn't want to. So I was putting, you know, setting up chairs for celebrating. He was sent to do a hit on Tino. Yeah, he was sent to do a hit on me. But one of the things was is that he didn't know what to do. I was cool with them on the yard, you know. We didn't have nothing against each other. But it was the head that told him to come in, you know, to do that, to hit me up. So I told him, I said, hold on, man, we got to talk. So we talked. And by the time we were done, the guard came and locked the door. You know, it was God's purpose. And the dude got scared because there was a riot on the yard. He locked the door. I got to lock you guys in, man, because there's something happening on the yard. And it was only me and him. So, you know, the intensity of his, in his mind came out, you know. So he ended up talking to me. He told me what was going on. So after that, I ended up praying with him. And then after that, I told him about the Lord. But then after that, he gave his life to the Lord right then and there. Oh, okay. By the grace of God. Wow. We prayed. I go, you know what? Don't even worry about it. It's going to be all right. By faith, I said, no, don't even worry about it. I don't even go back to the yard with you. So we went back to the yard and... Him getting rolled up off the yard because he didn't do that to me was disappeared. That guy that sent him got rolled off the yard. Next morning he comes up to me and says, hey bro, man, the dude got rolled up off the yard, man. He gave me a good handshake, you know what I mean? He gave him a hug. I said, you know what? God loves you, man. And he's real. You know, the rest is up to you. The rest is up to you what you do with the Lord. You know what I mean? You gave your life to the Lord, man. It's no more traditional stuff with you, man. You know what I mean? God has a, has a plan for you. So he went on his way. You know what I mean? And he was from another state. He was just there to do his time in Arizona. He wasn't, out, he wasn't supposed to be sent out to do something like that. Prison rule. You know what I mean? But the dude got saved. Yes. He got saved, amen? God. And that is one of the most important things in this life that a man has to do, is have a relationship with Christ. Oh, yes. Amen? He Amen. has to have a relationship with Christ. Because when you die, your body goes back to the ground where it came from. The spirit goes back to he who created it. But with the new covenant, the new covenant, we need to be cleansed. We need to repent every single day because why I might have a white shirt on looks pretty clean huh yeah doesn't it doesn't it the light you go out to the sunlight this is bright the white t-shirt is bright but as I was ironing this morning as I was ironing my shirt this morning <laughs> I look really close I look really close because you know God has a purpose for everything I left the shirt that I was supposed to wear today at home. And I didn't know it till last night. I was sitting there and everybody was asleep and I was sitting there. I was like, man, man I, I can't do nothing about it. So I thought about the white t-shirt. So you can't see, you know, the blemishes on it. It's got blemishes. It's got stains. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so you can see the white shirt. It's got stains, but it looks white, right? This is why every day, by the grace and the love of God, we, we, as children of God, can repent and ask God for forgiveness every day. Because every day we have a different blemish on our sin, on our, on our, on our hearts. Amen? We need to remember that. Okay, because the Lord looks at your heart. He looks at your heart. And you can barely see it. God, God will see it. That's we can't water, see man. it, but God will see it. Yes. I seen it when I was ironing. I was like, man. And then it popped into my mind. If it was my shirt, you'd see it. <laughs> We're cleansed white as snow. Yes. Amen. And we have to walk with the Lord.
obediently according to his word. And when we ask forgiveness, we get a new start. We get a new slate. And we have to remember that. When we stand before God, Amen. why is he gonna, why would he let you in if he sees that? Yeah. God is a holy God. He's a holy God. Amen. He is a holy God. Amen? Amen. Amen. And if he sees that blemish, what is he going to say? What is he going to do? What is he going to tell you what to do? Okay, we got that. We have the power to ask for forgiveness. And I know there's a lot of people in here, um, different churches that don't have the power and the strength. Why? Because they do not read the Word of God. God is a loving God. Just imagine if we would have lived in the Old Testament. Huh? Uh-oh. But through Jesus Christ, man, the love, the forgiveness, the hope. <coughs> Amen? Gino, the hope. Gino, tell, us, tell us how you uh, came to the Lord. Oh, Lord. the Lord. <laughs> yeah. The Lord. Man. I went to church with my wife. My wife, you know, we're living in the world and we try to come to, uh, try to do good. You know what I mean? We came... Man, you want to go to church? I go, you can go to church if you want, but you know, I'm going to do my thing. I was still even Catholic ways. And she got with a friend of hers, my wife, my wife's friend. She said, well, if you're going to do that, then you're not going to see me for a long time. For a long time, because I might be doing stuff for the church and this and that and this and that. I said, all right, cool. So I thought about it. So one day she invited me to a revival we had on the reservation in Salt River. And we went there, sat in the front row, seen everybody praying around, you know, speaking in tongues and all this and that. I wasn't, uh, you know, understanding none of that. So people started pointing at me. Hey, you gotta, God has a plan for you. Like, God has a plan. He has a plan, this and that, this and that. You know, I took it. You know, I said, all right, with all respect, I took it. And, uh, this is his plan. This is his plan. So, um, you know, I ended up giving my life to the Lord. Gave my life to the Lord. I walked home from the church because it was only like a quarter mile. But I was happy. I was in the honeymoon stage. <laughs> you know what I mean? I was happy. You know, I said, man, that feels pretty good. You know, and uh, a little while later, I ended up going back into the world. Went to church again. Went back into the world, me and my wife, you know, and and uh, I believe that's when God started working in my life, working in my life. And when I got to uh, taking, almost taking these three lives, God had a plan. I wasn't drunk. I wasn't high. I was sober. I stopped drinking for like two weeks and my buddy came and we ended up going and trying to wait for somebody in somebody's house. And these guys were there and they didn't like me. I said, man, we're not here to cause kind of trouble. But they brought it on themselves. <laughs> because uh, I didn't feel remorse for those people. I didn't feel no remorse for those people. I laid them all on the ground. My car wouldn't start. So when it started, I just closed the door and had everybody laid on the ground. Got in the car. So God, we cruised out of my neighborhood. My friend looked at me and just go, man. I looked at him, go, what? Man, you're stupid. After it happened. You know, this is a life that I live. But, like I said, you know what I mean? That was, that was one of the things that I done to go to prison. So I did six years. I did six years. I met the pastor there. And I ended up giving my life, you know, just to be sure, rededicating my life to the Lord, just to be sure. And I was. And when I got there, like about a week later, I had an encounter with the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Um, man. Sometimes my hair feels like it's sticking up. Yeah. I get the chills. This is good. I get the chills. 
Hallelujah. I was, I was asleep. I was asleep and I was blessed not even to have a bunk when I got there. They gave me a single, you know, living, you know, that was a blessing because you got to be there for a while to get that bed. But when I got there, I was given that bed number eight. So one day I was, I was asleep. I was asleep and I ended up just popping up real fast. And I grabbed my pen and my pad and I started writing. And all of a sudden the Lord was sitting right next to me. I mean, I was sitting on my bed. He was sitting, I was awake, sitting right there next to me, like, you know, next to me like this, turned towards me. And he was telling me with his voice, with the voice, it was a loud voice, but it was internet right now as I stand here. He's real. He's real. Again, it's appointed for man to die one time and then the judgment. And then the judgment. Our bodies will go back to the ground where it came from. But where will your spirit go? Where will it go? It's going to go somewhere and there's only two places. Heaven or hell. Yes. I'm going to tell you straight up. Heaven or hell. That's a fact. You know what I mean? Amen? Amen. Praise God. Praise God. But uh, God has been good. God has been good. You know, he softened my heart like the book of Ezekiel says. And I, that came true to me too. I mean, man, I just read that and I go, you know what? He said, I will remove your heart of stone and give you a heart of flesh. Me and the homies used to sit in the front of our house and brought an early daylight partying and drinking and people would come by trying to give us. And it seemed like they, they looked at us like devils with horns and you know what I mean? Working out in the front yard and just loud music. That's the way they probably seen us, you know what I mean? And now, man, I love everybody. I love everybody that comes my way. Everybody tells me, hey man, how come you're smiling so much? That's the love of Jesus. That's Jesus right there. Yeah. You know, that's because Tracy and Tracy Coba, how many of you know Tracy? Yeah, know Tracy. Tracy. Brother Tracy. Yeah. yeah. He was a big inspiration. And one of the times when we had Bible study, I was sharing this with Pastor. He was the head of a, you know, the white power in the prison system. He had a big old riot. And his chest tattooed. White, white pride. Yeah, white pride. He had a riot. And, you know, he showed us all these. He was all tatted up. Yes, no, right? Man, we have a Bible study one day. Yeah, that's Pastor Tracy now. Yeah, Pastor Tracy. <laughs> and we're having Bible study one day, and he wasn't there, so I guess he had somebody come visit him. And he came in, he sat down right next to me, and he goes, Hey, can I just interrupt one thing real quick, man? Just, I'm so excited I got a visit, and so and so. And, he goes, you know what? I just want to share with you guys. You know what I just found out? Guess what, man? I just found out that I'm half Jewish. <laughs> he, was so funny. he was so excited. Though. This man was so excited. He was just laughing. Yeah, well, I'm half Jewish, guys. Wow. Yeah, praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. He, he was oh my Lord. He was having the so whites funny. on the yard. Oh, no, he was half Jewish. It was so funny. It was so funny. I don't know how much time I have up here. But, um, you know, I'm not here to glorify the devil. Because he's a loser. Amen? He is. He is. Yeah, he's a loser. You know what I mean? Just remember. I want you to remember this. Just remember. Jesus, God our Father, Heavenly Father, Lord Jesus, he was always the winner. Yes. I mean, there was no contest. God is our creator. The devil is a counterfeiter. Amen. Amen. The devil is created. He's a created being. God is not. God has and always will be. Amen. Amen. He always will be God. He has no beginning. He has no end. Amen. Amen. But he knows our beginning and our end. Amen. 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 He knows it. And I want to I wanna just let you know that if you are in Christ Jesus, if you're in Christ Jesus, 
You are a new creation. You're a new creation. The old is gone. There's no more gang banging. There's a lot of different types of gang banging. Yeah. You know what I mean? And we all have that. We all have it. Okay? There's no more no more no more old stuff. It's the new covenant. That's what we did up here. You know what I mean? Yes. We're all overcomers, amen? Amen. 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 You know, I give God glory. I give him praise, honor. You know, I want to we'll share one more thing. Is that uh, my kids, my two little ones, Jordan and Austin, we've had them for, uh, for two years already. And when the pandemic started, the church that we uh, were attending now, Living Word, they used to be open arms, but now it's Living Word. And where we had church at home, we had shared testimonies. And these little kids never went to school. They never, uh, they, they didn't know how old they were. You know what I mean? The only school that the little girl Jordan knew was going to group, you know, on the Apache San Carlos Reservation. And man, I cried one day when we were sitting there because I went around the table and I just asked my son, Casey, what God has done for them. I didn't know that that little girl was drinking and smoking. And she gave God glory because she said, yeah, and I'm so happy that God made me stop that. Made me stop. Amen. Amen. Made me stop. She's only, what, 10? She's 9? She's 8? She's 8. Wow. <laughs> She was five years old at the time, and that's what they were doing. Oh, my dear. Okay? But now, you know, we teach them the Word of God all the time. I minister to them. I tell them, you know, I'm just like, they're not even my daughter. They're just my sister and my little brother, you know? And the kingdom of God, that's who we are. So Amen. Tell you, but what about, what about mom? She's my sister in Christ too, according to the kingdom of God, according to the yeah. word of God. She's my wife here. We're one. And one of the things I told my wife when we got married, but hey, you know what? We became one. And it says that no man can separate what God has brought together. Yeah. And I told her, not even you could separate us. I can't even separate you because we don't belong to each other. We belong to God. We don't belong to ourselves. We belong to the Lord. That's what the Bible says. We were purchased. And that's a lovely purchase, ain't it? Ain't it? Yeah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. When I came home from prison, I was, uh, I wasn't going to come home. I wasn't going to come home. I was going to another ministry. And when I was in there, I told my wife, you know what? Live your life. Live your life. I, I can't do nothing for you in here. I can't do nothing. You know, one of my children died. I can't do nothing. I can't. What am I going to do? Spend so much money just to go and look at a body and just go back to jail? Not worth it. But that's why God changes our hearts. He changes our hearts. If we have Jesus in here, we have our family in here. Amen? We have our families in our hearts. And I told her when I got out, I said, you know what? The Lord's done so much for me, and she wasn't going to go out and party. My wife was going to go out and party. So the ministry that I was going to go to, I got a write-up in the prison. And so that was out of that question. So they couldn't accept. So two weeks before I got out, I had to call her. I had to, because I needed to get out. The case worker told me, you got to get somewhere to go before we kick you out. <laughs> kick me out? Really? You guys going to kick me out? Right. You know what I mean? <laughs> literally, it sounds like, you know what I mean? That's literally but, um, what they do. Yeah. And so I called her. I said, man, I didn't want to. I mean, I didn't want to. I didn't want to go. You know, I wanted to serve the Lord in the street. You know, I'm not just saying that I can't still. But I ended up calling her. Everything went according. So I got out. And I went through a lot of things. I went through a lot of things that I could not do on the street. I ended up going to a... <laughs> Going to a place where the, 
it's nothing but full of drug addicts and drugs and you know they were my people so I ended up meeting some people on the way that were not understanding where I was with the Lord but I had to get away from them these were relatives of mine but I went through a lot of things on the way home and when we got when I got home she picked me up took me home she was gonna go out she was gonna go out. When I was in prayer, she was still doing worldly stuff, drinking, partying. And when I got there, I wasn't mad at her. She said she was gonna go out. And this is how powerful God is. I told her, you know what? If you're gonna go out, I don't hate you, I don't, I'm not mad at her. I just wanted to tell you, don't expect to find me here when you get back. That's all I said. I mean, I just can't be around that. I can't. That was the last time she went, drank, and did drugs. Wow. And she hasn't done it ever since. That was the last time. Why you got Give 50, God glory. 51%. Give God glory. That's all the Lord. All I said was, you know what? I love you, but I can't be around that. And when you come back, I might not be here. Don't be surprised if you don't find me here. You know what I mean? And that was the last time she took a drink and did drugs. I give God glory. You yeah. know what I mean? I praise God for that. You know, I, through all the corruption that I, you know, did get through my relatives, the only high that I used to get when I was selling and doing whatever was, hey, you got anything? That was the high. I mean, like, hey, it's not even like, hey, dear, how you doing, brother? It wasn't like that. Hey, got anything? <laughs> that was how they said hi to me. That's what they seen me as. You know, I, I didn't realize that. You know, and that's awful. It's an awful feeling when you come to your senses and you understand that, man. Yeah. You know what I mean? And it hurts. Today, you know, I'm a big crybaby now. Sitting there crying. I do. And... I don't care. I really don't care. My kids like, are you okay, Dad? I said, man, I'm I'm glad. I don't cry just just to cry because I'm sad. I cry because the joy of the Lord. He's my strength. Delight yourself in the Lord. And he'll give you the desires of your heart. Amen. Amen. Praise God. Uh, man, I love the Lord. How many love Jesus? How many love Jesus? You know what I mean? You know, I thank you for, you know, listening, you know, because what, what Pastor Basie did in the prison, I sponged off. And there was a time when he said he smashed his finger on a hammer instead of our minds Bleep, bleeping, bleep, 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 even as Christians. This man said, Jesus, 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 Jesus. <laughs> that is what totally inspired me. I said, man, that's what the Lord. He eats, drinks, sleeps the Lord. And he said that. You know what I mean? He said him and his wife, Sandra Basie, mom and pop, they inspired me a lot. They inspired me a lot while I was in the prison. In that prison, there were so many things happening. So many things. And I was just blessed to be there. I'm a percussionist in my church. Amen? Yeah. You know what I mean? And one of the things, one of the things, and I, there's so many, so many things I can say. One of the things that taught me and that humbled me was getting on the drums. I spent a lot of heavy metal. You know, I was a rock and roll gangbanger. You know, I, you know that's you know, grew up on vintage music like Led Zeppelin and all that. Got into the heavy metal scene. You know, I went to a like this. I used to dress like this, put my heavy metal shirt on. You know what I mean? And and I that's the type of music I used to play. Cover songs like that. <laughs> just mess around and but when I came to Play the drums on one slowest song ever. I couldn't do it. I just couldn't get the right slow tempo on it. 
There was a beautiful song called Make Me Over. Do you remember when they used to put me on that? It took me a month to get it. And the guy, the, the leader, he used to say, you know what? I'm going to get the sticks from you, but don't leave. A lot of people leave because their pride is hurt because they want other person to show them. And that's what was happening. He gave the sticks to uh, George. Yeah, George. When we were talking about him the other night. Yeah. And he showed me. And I went back on there, and I couldn't get it. He showed me again. I couldn't get it. He showed me again. I couldn't get it. Man, back and forth. So we let it ride for a little while, and he tried it again. And I finally, finally, I said, man, put the sticks down. Humble yourself. I prayed. That's what my prayer life started. Pray, and God came through. We got came through, so he used me to play that song every time it came out, we played it. Man, but it taught me a lot of humility. Showed me that God is real, but when you ask, you know, because when you ask not, you know, yeah. when you have not, because you have not asked the Lord for you. Yeah. And he gave me that humility. And there's some one thing that the devil can never do is humble himself. Yeah. That's why we have to walk with humility. Humility. Amen? It's one of the fruits of the Spirit. We Man, God is good. good. Amen? Yeah. God is good. Yeah. I can tell you more, but... You can find me on Facebook, Tino Gonzalez. You know, that's all I do. I use Facebook as a servant. Use social media as a servant. Amen? Mm -hmm. Use it as a servant, because that's what I do. You know what I mean? That's all I do. I don't care who friend requests me, devil worshipers, whatever. I, I respond, but I use it as a servant of God. Amen? Nothing on that is mine. Everything belongs to the Lord. We know that new technology says in the Bible that's going to increase. But so is God's Word. God's Word is here to last forever. Amen? Amen. 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 Hallelujah. You are a new creation. Amen. Thank you. Hallelujah. Pastor Macy? Here you go, sir. Thank you for welcoming me to the church. Thank you for thank you everybody for helping us out here and man we just so blessed. We need a drummer. Yeah, yeah we could use a drummer, but it's called country. They would yeah. not hey, they good. were so good. good. This worship team we're talking about in prison was so good. I wasn't allowed to play with them. <laughs> <laughs> That's true. They were good. Yeah, we were good. You would have fit in, Steve, but they wouldn't let me in with my reports. The Knights of Christ, that was what we were called. Yeah. Wow. Amen. Thank you for welcoming me. Thank nice you. Thank you. I hope I can meet everybody when the service is over. I just like everybody, just like everybody in you. I need Jesus. Amen. Amen. I need Jesus. This is all this is world. Amen. Amen. God bless you. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. He was he was supposed to sing a song. He was supposed to, but he didn't play guitar, so we didn't have drums. Hallelujah. But Tina, we appreciate you. Um, and uh, he's speaking of a time that was very dear to Sandy and I's heart. It was a time. We'd spent already 20 years in the prison ministry by the time we went out there. And it, it was, that three and a half years was really a time. We have so many people now who are pastors and evangelists and they go out and spreading the word of God from that three and a half year period of time. And I remember when we left the prison, Sandy and I sat at the edge of the bed and cried because we, we were not allowed back into that prison anymore because... Uh, I was asked by the warden, after, after they had the escape, you remember the escape? You would have thought I let the people out. So it, it got bad for me. In there. And they transferred people out, like Tino and all the other people that transferred them off the yard. And, and Sandy even got written up by an officer because when she was saying goodbye to Tino, uh, she started crying. She got written up for crying over an inmate. Oh, and my Lord. I got asked if... Uh, what I was doing, I was supposed to be a chaplain, and so you're acting like a pastor. 
you know, I wasn't a chaplain, I wasn't a pastor, I was a chaplain. And so it's like you like the inmates better than you like us. And I said, well, I'm called to them. Yes. I got fired soon after that. They forget that I used the word retirement, but actually they asked me to leave. Um, but it was a special time, wasn't it? You know, it was a special time. And um, then there was a handful of people. Where'd they go? Where'd they go? Handful of people. Where they go? Carl. Carl, sitting outside looking for a pastor. You had six or seven people here at that time looking for a pastor. I said, well, they just fired me for being a pastor. That's <laughs> why so I wound up here. It's been a blessing. Thank you. Hallelujah. Praise God. Thank you. Amen. Anyway. Thank you, Lord. Let's just pray. Lord, thank you, Lord, for your witnesses that you sent forth in this world. Lord, thank you that somebody can stand up here and say, Jesus is real. Because you are an invisible God, but you're all around us, Lord. And the lives that have been changed, Jordan and, and babies, Lord, now have a mommy and a dad from two people that were nothing but drug addicts, Lord, and, and, and heathens on the street are now teaching these children your word. Thank you, Lord, that you're, you're not just the giver of life, you're the giver of new lives, yes. constantly changing lives. Lord, as I look around this room, I see a lot of people whose lives have been changed by your power, Lord, and I want to thank you for who you are. That you are the giver of life and the changer of lives. Thank you for what we've heard today, Lord, as we go forth in Jesus' name. Okay. Thank you.